This video will show you how to assemble the Rad Mini 4. Photograph all four sides of the box and the label with the serial numbers, making sure that the label is easy to read for your records. Open the box and remove the small box inside. This contains the manual, charger, pedals, headlight, handlebar faceplate hardware, fender mounting hardware, velcro strap, and the assembly toolkit. This assembly toolkit includes 8 and 10, 13 and 15, and 16 and 18 millimeter wrenches, 3, 4, 5, and 6 millimeter Allen wrenches, and a Phillips head and a flathead screwdriver. You will use many, but not all of these tools to assemble the bike. We also recommend using a pair of flat side cutters, a pedal wrench, a bike pump with a Schrader valve and a pressure gauge, a torque wrench with the four and five millimeter bits, bicycle grease, and a friend to help with the assembly. Carefully lift the bike out of the box and rest it on the rear wheel and the front fork protector plate. Snip the zip ties to remove the front wheel and fender and set them aside. Remove the rest of the packaging material from everything except the handlebar for now and leave the keys zip tied to the seat until you are ready to ride. Recycle the packaging material according to local rules. Install the handlebar by unfolding the stem and closing the lever until it clicks into place. Rotate the stem and the front fork counterclockwise so that the fork arch is in the front and the brake cable is on the left. Make sure that no cables are wrapped around the head tube. Locate the bag with the handlebar faceplate hardware. Remove the bolts from the bag and pass a washer onto each bolt end. Then set them aside near the handlebar. Remove the packaging from the sides of the handlebar. Snip the zip tie securing the stem faceplate to the handlebar. It's held in place by the display. Orient the handlebars so the brake levers face forward and the three button remote is on the rider's left side. Trace the brake cable from the left handlebar grip to the brake caliper on the left fork lower. Make sure the bundle of cables is not twisted. Place the handlebar on the stem so it's oriented properly and centered. Install the four bolts and use a 5mm Allen wrench to tighten part way in an X pattern. Ensure the gap between the faceplate and the stem is evenly spaced and the bolts are tightened evenly. Torque the bolts to 10 newton meters. Torque the upper and lower handlebar stem clamp bolts to 15 newton meters. To install the front wheel, first, locate the quick release skewer holding the fork protector plate in place. Open the lever and remove the thumb nut and cone spring on the opposite side. Remove the skewer, keeping the washer and the other cone spring in place on the lever side. Remove the packaging from the front wheel without touching the brake rotor. Pass the skewer through the front hub from the brake rotor side of the wheel and reinstall the cone spring on the other side. Both cone springs should point in towards the wheel hub. Thread the thumb nut just a couple of turns, leaving enough room for the fork dropouts. Make sure the lever is open and then carefully lift the front of the bike, remove the protective plate, and lower the fork onto the wheel. The brake rotor should go into the brake caliper, in between the brake pads, and the axle should enter the fork dropouts fully. If installing the front wheel is difficult, use a 5mm Allen wrench to widen the gap between the brake pads by turning the inner pad adjuster out or counterclockwise two clicks. Check that the wheel is fully seated in the dropouts and that it is centered. Hold the quick release lever in line with the axle and tighten the thumb nut on the opposite side until the lever can stay parallel to the floor without being held. Then use the palm of your hand to close the lever without touching the brake rotor. There should be enough resistance that the lever leaves an imprint on your palm. Install the pedals by threading them onto the pre-greased cranks. Identify each pedal by the sticker or the markings on the pedal axle. The right pedal has a smooth axle and tightens by turning clockwise. Thread the pedal in carefully by hand. The left pedal has grooves on the axle and tightens by turning counterclockwise. Thread the pedal in carefully by hand. Once the pedal axles are fully threaded into the cranks, 
Use a pedal wrench to torque each pedal to 35 newton meters. To install the headlight and front fender, first remove the headlight mounting hardware from the fork arch using a 5mm Allen wrench and a 10mm wrench. Pass the fender from the back of the wheel forwards through the fork arch. Pass a washer onto the bolt, and then pass the bolt through the headlight mount, the fender mounting point, and the fork arch mounting point. Then, install the remaining washer and thread the lock nut onto the bolt end. Use a 5mm Allen wrench and a 10mm wrench to tighten the bolt part way. Torque the headlight mounting bolt to 6 Newton meters. To plug in the headlight connector, align the internal notch and pins and external markings and press together without twisting. Center the headlight and adjust the angle slightly downwards so that it will illuminate the ground in front of the bike and will not blind oncoming traffic. Locate the fender mounting hardware and place the fender arm eyelet over the mounting point at the bottom of the fork. Thread the bolt by hand and use a 4mm Allen wrench to tighten. Repeat on the other side. On the rear wheel, secure the fender arms to the mounting point that is the farthest back on the bike. Ensure both fenders are centered and torque the four bolts to six newton meters. Visually inspect the tires and make sure the tire bead is evenly seated around the rim. Use a bike pump with a Schrader valve and a pressure gauge to inflate the tires to between 20 to 30 PSI or the pressure indicated on the tire sidewall. Open the seat quick release lever and remove the seat post. Adjust the clamp so it is centered over the notch on the seat tube. Apply a small amount of grease to the seat post and insert it so the minimum insertion mark is completely inside the seat tube. Adjust the seat post up or down to a comfortable height. Tighten the adjustment thumb nut on the clamp with the lever in line, halfway closed. When you feel resistance, close the lever fully, which should require enough pressure to leave an imprint in your hand. The seat post should not move once the lever is closed. Always check that all folding latch mechanisms are locked and secure before riding. Snip the zip tie holding the keys on the seat's grab handle. Use the key to turn on the battery. Check that the battery is locked to the frame. Test the bike fully and work through the pre-ride safety checklist before riding. The owner's manual contains important details related to safety and maintenance. Read it fully and keep it for future reference. Reach out to Rad Power Bikes Product Support if you have any questions and ride rad.